Hello and welcome back to Dino Megas Fishing School. Today we're going to talk about the legendary fish. A common question I'm seeing goes something sort of like this. Hey Dino, you're never going to believe it. I caught the Manji Manji while fishing in Everfall. I linked it in chat and everyone cheered for me. They call me the best fisherman on the server, but I have no idea what it's used for or how much it's worth. Can you help me figure this out? Also, what other legendary fish are out there? Thanks, Timmy. Those are excellent questions, Timmy, and congratulations on the fine catch. First, let's talk about the basics of legendary fish. Now, legendary fish are the rarest fish you can catch. There are currently 14 known legendary fish in our new world. And we also have 14 different regions. Yep, you guessed it. Each region has its own legendary fish. Now, legendary fish can be caught in both freshwater and saltwater, and they can also be caught inside of hotspots and outside of them. You can also buy and sell them in the trading post. They also share the same weight and length. Now, the absolute best way to catch legendary fish has four key components to it. Gear, trophies, bait, and location. For gear, I recommend completing the fishing quest chain. From this chain, you'll receive a number of gear pieces as well as fishing poles with specific perks on them just for fishing. And this is also how you obtain the legendary fishing pole. I created a guide for the fishing quest chain, and I'll leave a link to that in the description of this video. And an alternative to the quest chain gear is the vengeful fishing gear, but it does require you to be level 60 to equip it. And you can find this gear in random drops inside of epic chests at endgame landmarks. And this gear is buy on equipped, so you can also find it in the trading post if you're lucky. But these pieces will be hit or miss. As you can see, my quest reward smock is actually better than this vengeful one. But these gloves, I'm gonna have to pick these up real quick. These are a nice upgrade from the quest reward ones. Now it is possible to catch legendaries without this gear, but you're gonna have a really hard time getting rid of the bite. And since we are talking about efficiency and gear, I would also like to point out two more things. And the first is the Crest Reward hats. If you look at the T4 one, it is actually better for us than the T5 one. Look at these stats. The T4 one gives us Lucky Waters too, while the T5 one gives us a cast distance boost. And the other thing I'd like to mention is in regards to the legendary pole. You'll really want to make sure you're aligning with the boost yours gives. Matching these conditions will give us personally the best chance. I also recommend having fishing trophies in your houses. The bonus from one major, the epic one, is about the same as the bonus you get from using the firefly bait. Now if you get your hands on three major trophies and put one in each of your houses, this is going to be a nice boost to your rarity and thus a nice boost to your chance of catching legendary fish. And we'll talk more about fishing trophies later in this video, but for now let's continue. Now for bait, you're going to want to use the best rarity boosting baits, obviously, and that's based on whichever water type you're fishing in. And for fresh water, this is the firefly bait, and we should be found this along harvesting bulrushes and briars around lakes and rivers. Now I harvest 50 firefly baits after picking up around 100 bulrushes, and this is a pretty decent drop rate. For salt water, you'll want to use the glow worm, which can be found while picking up flints at night. Now I recommend the shoreline for flints. They're abundant and easy to target. You won't get that fresh water pickup notification. And if you get a night crawler, that means it's not nighttime anymore. And after picking up about 100 flints, I only had about 15 glow worms. This drop rate is pretty weak in my opinion. Now if you're a fisher for life, you probably want to set up some bio orders in each of the starter zones for these baits and you want them to be reasonable so set them at around 50% of the market price. Now you could try to lowball it and you will get a few sales but if you really want to make this work 50% of the market price is a good point that is balanced between value saving and volume efficiency. And our last and final key component to our formula for fishing for legendary fish is location. And secret hotspots are going to be your most ideal locations. And hotspots provide us a big boost to our chance of rarity, and secret hotspots give us the biggest boost. Hotspots unlock as you level in a predetermined order, and you also need to visit them before they'll appear on your map. And if you're not sure what hotspots you have access to, I made a tool for that, and I'll leave a link to that in the description. So whichever legendary fish you're after, make sure you are fishing out of the secret hotspot wherever they are. And not all regions will have secret hotspots, so your best bet for those would be the rare hotspots instead, the two star ones. Now when you maximize these four key components, it'll even be possible to pull up multiple legendary fish from the secret hotspot. And I've done this on a handful of times. Now that you know the best way to catch them, here are the three primary uses for our legendary fish. And they are cooking, peacocking, and trophy building. And for cooking, you have to find the recipes before you can cook them. Now these recipes can be found in provision containers in level 56 and up areas. And you just salvage recipe to learn it. And once you do it, it will appear in your cooking list. And there are five different legendary fish used in specific cooking recipes. And these recipes end up giving us meals that produce plus 40 stats. Really good ones. And we'll go over which ones specifically and where to find them in the next section. Now the second use is for taxidermy wall mounts that we can hang in our houses to boost our peacocking score. And peacocking score is a value assigned to your house based on what you have placed inside of it. And the highest scored house for each plot is the one that is featured. And by feature, that's what people will see when they run by. You can obtain the taxidermy wall mounts just by salvaging the specific fish. And not all legendary fish can be salvaged. It's only possible on these specific ones. And this taxidermy version can be hung on your wall right away. There's nothing else is required. 
It is, however, worth mentioning that the taxidermy versions are bind on pickup, so only salvage them if you're going to use them personally. And currently, there's four different legendary fish that can be taxidermied and hung on our wall. And the last and final use for these legendary fish is for trophies. And for the fishing trophy recipe to appear in your furnishing skill list, you have to have the key ingredient on you or in the local storage. These key ingredients are called artifacts, and for our use, they're just taxidermied versions of the fish, which, as you just learned, is obtained from salvaging the specific fish. We can use these to make the rare and epic fishing trophies at level 150 and 200 furnishing skill. I had to source the creation of my basic fishing trophy on my server Binda to someone named Papsy. And if you do have someone create yours, please make sure you tip them well. It is a lot of effort to get furnishing skill this high, especially in the early game. I gave Papsy a couple extra of the artifact fish needed and 1000 coins. There is also an ultimate fishing trophy, which we can only assume is a legendary version. However, this trophy does not appear to be in the game, or it's not created through normal crafting. There's literally no reference to this trophy in the data files when looking at all the individual fish that are supposed to be linked to it. It just doesn't exist as far as I can tell. I even brought these fish to the Grand Master to see if he could assist. However, he had no idea either. If anyone out there has more information about this trophy, please let us know in the comments. And once this ultimate trophy is added, I'll post an updated video as well as mention the update in the description of this one. Now it's a real shame I can't find anything about this trophy, but it is what it is. Hopefully it gets added soon. Now let's talk specifics about the 14 different legendary fish, and I'm probably going to fail miserably at pronouncing some of these names, so I do apologize in advance. And let's start off with the ones used in cooking. First, we have the Abea Serp. You catch this fish in Windsward, and I recommend visiting the three-star hotspot at Fisherman's Bend or the two-star hotspot along the East Coast. This fish can be used to create the plus 40 int food, steamed Abea Serp. And to find this recipe, you need to search the provision crates in 56 plus areas. Look at that, two for one. Must have been a big one. The developers have a code name called Bishop Fish for this one, and that's a reference to a sea monster out of Poland. And the lore note, Tales of Windsworth, Shields Fishing Stories, page three says, Respectfully released. I once caught a fish I couldn't stand to keep. It looked at me with the eyes of a man, and the manner of an old priest he used to attend service for in the old world. He preached a real fire and brimstone kind of sermon, and this fish, I swear, had the same look in his eyes. Couldn't bear to eat it, so I threw it back. Maybe someone else will catch him someday. Next up, we have the Albanaja, which can be found in First Light. And First Light doesn't have any secret or rare hotspots, it just has broad ones, so that's going to be your best bet for catching this one. We use this one to create the plus 40 dex food, Fried Albanaja. And the recipe can be found in provision crates in 56 plus areas. Doesn't that just look tasty? And the developer codename for this one is Anglerfish. And an Anglerfish is that one that has the lure that dangles in front of it, with the little luminescence glow to it. That's how it hunts its prey. Tales of First Light, Clemenson's Notes, page 3 says, A first light in the dark. I see the glow of our incandescent head bulb floating up towards the surface, towards my pole, and then quickly away. The female Abinaja glows with the light of Azoth on her bulb. It can only be found in first light from what I've seen. She yields a hefty chunk of meat, but perhaps the bragging rights are even bigger and better. The glowing new fish can be found in Cutlass Keys. I recommend the three star hotspots at either the Rubble Shores or the Haunted Isles. These are going to be your best bet. And if they're down, try out some of the two star ones. And we use this one to create the plus 40 strength food. Roasted New Fish. And like all the other ones, you find this recipe in the level 56 plus provision crates. Yummy! And the developer code name for this one is Marrow, which is a mermaid merman from Irish folklore who can travel between land and water. Tales of Cutlass Keys, Perchel's Fishing Follies, page 3 says, Scales and Scars. I saw something the other day that no one will believe. It has begun to drive me mad. I thought at first someone was trying to steal my fishing spot again. But upon closer inspection, the someone wriggled off into the water with a screech. It was using a tool to get chunks of loose earth from my spot. I know it to be true. I will see you again, glowing new fish. And next time you will be mine, Perchel. The Rayfin Bar, which can be found in Monarch's Bluffs. I recommend the three star or the two star hotspots for this one. You have multiple choices here. And we use this one to create the plus 24 constitution plus 16 dex food. Blackened Rayfin Barb with fondant, potatoes, and barley. And like all the other recipes, you find it in the provision crates in level 56 zones. Delicious. And the developer codename for this one is Moreg, which is a reference to a sea monster living in Loch Morar in Scotland. 
Tales of Monarchs Bluffs, Warwick's Fishing War, page one says, The one that got away, fish escapee. Out by the coast, she still lurks, evading me at every turn. I know I had her on my hook once or twice for her favorite bait is glowworms, and I have them in great supply. I know it's the same Rayfin Barb. I've taken to calling her Nibbler for the way she toys with my barber before I can properly hook her. This one is too smart for her own good. Nibbler must be a lady, for you see it's a female barb who hulks over the male in size. And her wit is mighty quick. But I shall not let her outswim or outsmart me. I'll get her one day and mount her on my home wall. One day, Nibbler, you shall be mine. Alright, that's Warwick, everybody. Wow. And next we have the Lava Bar, which can be found in Shattered Mountain. And we use this one to create the plus 40 focus food called Black and Menja Menja with Corn Succotash. That's a weird word. I know, you're probably thinking, wait a minute, why is it a black and manja manja and it uses a lava barb? Well, I think this is actually a bug, but it is what it is, and this is how you make it. You actually use the lava barb. And if you look at the descriptions of the lava barb, it actually says it's used for a trophy. And if you look at the description for the manja manja, it's actually used for a recipe. So I don't know what's going on here, but obviously there's bugs with it. To actually make this, you do use the lava barb right now. Oh, now doesn't that just look fancy? And like all the other recipes, you find it in the provision crates in level 56 zones. And the code name for this one is Mishu Peshu, which is an underwater panther of lynx. Has head and paws of a cat, but covered in scales and has spikes along its back. Says its origin is to the Great Lakes. Tales of Shattered Mountain, Bernard's booklet, page one says, The underwater panther. Armed with horns and teeth sharper than the average straight sword, the lava bar makes a life for itself here in Shattered Mountain. It's not a glamorous life by any means, swimming around in corrupted waters, but it is a life nonetheless. Should you go swimming and feel something slice into your ankle, it is already too late. Next up, we have Timmy's Catch, the Manchin Manchi, which is native to Everfall. And this is the most mysterious fish in the game. That is because although this fish says that it's using a cooking recipe, and there is a recipe called Black and Manja Manji with Corn Succotash, this fish is actually not used in that recipe, or any other recipes at the time of creating this guide. The Black and Manja Manji actually uses the Lava Barb as an ingredient instead. My only assumption is that this is a bug, because the tooltip for the Lava Barb actually says it's used for a trophy. So unfortunately, Timmy, as of right now, your fish is pretty much worthless. Outside of being used for a raw food, there literally is no purpose for this fish to even exist. I suggest holding on to it for now. Maybe someday the gods will bless this fish with a purpose. Now the origin of the name Manji seems to be either Danish or Dutch. In Dutch, the meaning for Manji seems to be a basket, so that doesn't help us out much either. And the developer code name for this fish is also Manji Manji, which also tells us nothing we don't already know. Tales of Everfall, Ruby's Fishing Tips and Tricks, page 2 says, Drawing in rarer fish. There is one fish so rare in Everfall that even I have not seen Finn nor Nagil of it. The legendary Manji Manji is said to look like a little man with web feet and hands. But that cannot be so. One day I will catch it and prove the ridiculous rumors wrong. But that day is not today. Do you think it's real Machera? You would know best. Well, Ruby, I went ahead and visited Machera, and I asked him that myself. And just like the ultimate trophy, he had nothing to say about it. So, unfortunately, not much else to say about this one. Now, if and when they add anything else to this, I'll be sure to let you guys know in the future. Next up, we have the Blue Blooded Barb. And this one can be found in Reekwater. And we got six different three star hotspots in Reekwater. And we use this one for furnishing taxidermy wall mount. And to get the taxidermy wall mount, all you do is salvage the fish. Now, this only works with certain fish, like this one. And it's also used in the construction of the basic trophy artifact for fishing. And for the basic fishing trophy recipe to appear in your furnishing list, you're going to need to have this wall mount in your inventory or in your storage. As soon as it's there, you'll see it in your list. And the developer code name for this one is Tessie, which is a reference to Tahoe Tessie, a sea creature believed to have lived in an underground tunnel in Lake Tahoe. Now the lore note for this one is actually in Restless Shores, even though you catch the fish in Reekwater. Tales of Restless Shore, O'Connor's Triumphs, page 3. Behemoth sighted. Blue-blooded barb, O love of mine, behemoth of the deep, one day you shall be mine, and on that day I will take your corpse to Grand Fisher Machera and show him what I've learned. Challenge him to a fish-off. Once I have you, I shall rule the fishing world of Eternum. The Demon Naja, which can be found in Evanscale Reach. Now, just like all the other fish, I recommend the three-star and the two-star hotspots if you're out looking for them. And we can use this one as a furnishing taxidermy wall mount. And to get the wall mount, all you do is salvage the fish. The taxidermy wall mount is the key artifact ingredient to make the major fishing trophy. 
And once you have the wall mount in your inventory or in storage, you'll be able to see the furnishing recipe to create the major fishing trophy. The developer code name for this one is Half Goofo, which is a massive sea monster from Greenland Sea, which disguises itself as an island or pair of rocks rising from the sea. Tales of Morningdale, a Bebe's Morning, page three. Moving rocks in the water. Have you ever stepped on a stone near the water only to have it slink away out from under you? You may have encountered the Half Goofa then. This gigantic breed of fish uses the rock-like structures on its back to float near the surface and fool travelers into thinking they stepped on steady ground. With how slippery the rocks are here in Morningdale, I much cast this demonaja before someone slips and breaks a neck. Machera, do you have any thoughts on this? And the Grandmaster's only thought on this is that the demonaja is actually caught in Evanscale Reach, not in Morningdale. Somebody needs to tell a baby. The Agati Serp is native to Brightwood. And in Brightwood we have one 3 star hotspot and one 2 star hotspot. So I would bounce between these two if you're fishing for them. And we also use this one for a taxidermy wall mount as well. To get the wall mount all you do is salvage the fish. And the developer code name for this one is Namazu. Which in Japanese mythology is a giant underground catfish that causes earthquakes. Tales of Brightwood, Parks Research Notes page 1 says... The legendary catch. It is said that there is a catfish whose skin is lined with Azov, dubbed Gade Serp after a traveler saw it. And to catch a serp is to peek as a fisher here in Brightwood. If only I could reel in this mysterious creature and perform experiments. Park. Varanus Manche, which can be found in Weaver's Fen. And I would bounce between the three star and two star hotspots. And we use this one for a furnishing taxidermy wall mount as well. And to get the wall mount, all you do is salvage a fish. And the developer name for this one is Ogopogo, which is a reference to a Canadian lake monster. Tales of Weaver's Fen, Agarol's Diary, page two says. Today I saw something lurking in the distance just out of sight. I know it now to be a Varnus Manche, the serpent of legend that a woman in that settlement once spoke of encountering and running away from. The people depend on me, and the Manche looks dangerous to my trained eye and looked dangerous to the civilian's untrained one, so I must catch it at all costs. The Aquanaja is the next one on our list, and that one can be found in Morningdale. And we have a three-star freshwater and a three-star saltwater that are pretty close to each other, so I would bounce between these two. Maybe slide in one of these two stars when you can. Now this one says it's used for the ultimate trophy, and if you saw the earlier parts of this video, you'd understand that the ultimate trophy is not part of the game right now. So this one is pretty much worthless. And the developer ID for this one is the Gade Serpent, which is a reference to a giant sea serpent in Greenland. Tales of Ebenscale Reach, Chang Scrolls page 1 says, Slinking on by, from the library of Chang's fishing scrolls. Should you ever see a spout of water emerge from the sea of Evanscale Reach? No, you have seen the Aquanaja. This rotund, flesh-like serpent dwarfs all other serpents, for it is at least the length of a galleon. It shoots spouts of water out into the air for reasons unknown. Perhaps it is playing, toying with onlookers. Either way, I dream of capturing it one day and feeding the settlement with its bounty. Now, it's interesting that this lore note says it's in the sea of Ebenscale Reach. However, from what we know, it's actually caught in Morningdale. I don't know if this is just a typo or what. The Blue Wing Serp is next on our list, and this one could be found in the Great Cleave. Now, the Great Cleave doesn't have many choices for hotspots, so you just got to bounce between them both. And this one is also used for the Ultimate Trophy, which, as you know, does not exist in the game. The developer ID for this one is Merlion, which from Malaysian and Indonesian lore is a half lion, half fish. Tales of Great Cleave, Clauses Memories, page 1 says, Beast of the Water, there is a creature, a Blue Wing Serpent, that lurks in the Great Cleave's waters. Some don't believe it exists, but I've had it on my line more than once, and that is one tricky beastie. I've heard it roaring in the night, breaching the water like a dolphin to let loose its terrible cry. One day it shall be mine, and then no one will doubt me. The glowing guardfish can be found in restless shores, and this is also used for the ultimate trophy that doesn't exist in the game. The developer ID for this one is Selkie, which is a mythological half-man, half-seal from Danish origin. Tales of Reekwater, Bachera's Meditations, page 1 says, Seal Folk. The glowing guardfish understands the importance of being one with the fish, but goes perhaps too far. These men and women of the seal folk shed their pelts and come to walk upon the shores as humans, it said. They are people so in tune with the ocean that they can quickly transform if given their pelt into something more seal than human. I refuse to catch them as I admire them immensely. Perhaps one day I shall meet one properly, and we might talk the ways of the seas. The horn toothed Manji is native to Eden Grove. Just like all the other legendary fish, your best bet's gonna be the secret hotspots. Eden Grove has two secret hotspots for us, so bounce between those. You know, if you got competition out there, you might want to squeeze in two star one as well. And this one's also used for the ultimate trophy, which as you know does not exist at the time of this recording. And the developer code name for this one is Abaya. And Melanesian Lords has a, this is a large eel that dwells at the bottom of freshwater lakes.
Tales of Eating Grove, Davies Field Notes, page 1, says, The Mythical Eel, a scrap of notes from Master Fisher Davies' journal. In the freshwater of Eating Grove lurks a sea monster rarely sighted near the surface. Horntooth Manchu, the mythical eel of legend, swims through freshwater, undulating its long, slimy body through the waters. Its legend states that those who would harm the Horntooth Manchu's waters would face her wrath, a massive tide coming to wash away the perpetrator. This is how Eating Grove stays so clean, or at least one would imagine. Let's talk about profiting from legendary fish. Now, personally, I think the foods are the real winners here. These plus 40 foods are the best in the game. There is going to be demand for them. You know, whether you make these foods directly or just sell the fish, that's up to you. You know, it really depends on your market. Now, the taxidermy related fish have some kind of small market. But this also requires a person to know that they have to salvage the legendary fish to get them. And most people that are looking for decorations are just going to be browsing through the furnishing section. It might take some time for people to catch on to this. And remember, you can't sell the taxidermy bases, only the unsalvaged fish. As soon as you salvage it, it becomes bind on pickup. Now the fishing trophies, I don't think there'll be a very strong market in these legendaries. And only people who fish will want these trophies, and most of them will get their hands on these fish themselves. You know, until the ultimate trophy actually exists, the legendary fish used exclusively for those I wouldn't even bother with. You know, there's just no value there. You know, they do count as a raw food, but, you know, that's as good as it's going to get for right now. And it is rather unfortunate that we have these bugs and missing elements with the legendary fish. You know, it's also a real shame that the ultimate trophy doesn't even exist. You know, it's clear there's still a lot more work to be done over here. I mean, we don't even have the icons for the basic and major fishing trophies yet. I didn't see anything for Arcana with the legendary fish either. You know, with all the other emphasis on fishing salvage, they would think there would be some kind of place for legendary fish in Arcana. And when things change, I'll post updates and mention it in the description of this video. Okay, that's going to be it. I hope this guide helped you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I will answer what I can and make videos for the most popular questions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.